Well, good evening, everyone. I want to thank you for joining me on this evening's broadcast, and thank you to everyone for your input on the last one. Friends, we really, we need to begin looking at all these things going on in the news, in the USA in particular, in the light of the end times, if you aren't already. And this is absolute insanity what's going on, and it's exactly as the Lord showed me years ago. He told me when it comes, it will come in waves, the destruction of the USA, waves of destruction and economic collapse, and that's exactly what we're seeing now, one wave after another wave. And, and one thing that you need to prepare your hearts for is that if you're living in the USA, it's that prospect of these rescuers in future weather events no longer being Americans, but being foreigners. Because in order for the New World Order to come to their throne, they have to utterly destroy the infrastructure of the USA. And I kept looking at the helicopter footage of Kentucky today, very, very sad. I think I looked at it at least three times. And I kept thinking, all these neighborhoods, they look like small little garden plots. It looked like a bunch of flooded out garden plots from an aerial view. And more rain is expected to hit Kentucky. I heard Dabu 7 last night organizing folks for search and rescue missions this morning. So there were still a couple hundred people missing as of late last night. And there are no official numbers out on the death toll. I think the last uh, count that I saw was around about five o'clock this evening and that number was 37. So please pray for these very humble, uh, down to earth people of Kentucky and don't forget Colorado, Arizona, Virginia and Missouri too for the weather related events that they're going through. Weather related events are going to rise and soon it could be in your neck of the woods friends. So please, you know, pray for everyone as though you're praying for yourself. My mom's side of the family is from Kentucky, and there really is no other place like Kentucky in the USA. These people, uh, they love to have a simple life. They love self-sufficiency. Uh, they love their guns. Uh, they love big trucks and farming and horses. And Governor Andy Bashir, he took a helicopter tour with the head of FEMA today. And the local headlines are actually being repeated again today, whereby it says, Andy Bashir wonders why, why we keep getting hit. And friends, I didn't need to read the entire article whereby these experts are weighing in because none of these experts probably have their Bibles open as, as they looked at Satan being the prince of the power of the air and these last four uh, catastrophes that hit Kentucky. They were from the air. So you can read in the book of Job how God allowed the devil to test Job. Yes, the devil was a weather modifier even back then, uh, sending killer tornadoes. So now I want to look at the last past four catastrophes that have hit Kentucky. All right, let's go through these. February 2020, the Cumberland and uh, Kentucky rivers were their highest in decades. And Governor uh, Bashir back then, I think it was his first time as governor, he declared a state of emergency. And mind you, he's only been in office for three years now. He's getting uh, very experienced at calling state of emergencies. And I want to mention this, he only won the election by 5,000 votes. So I wonder if the next election will tip in the favor of gun confiscation from all these people's lives being destroyed. Now, the next disaster after that was February 2021, the worst flooding in at least 60 years affecting central and eastern Kentucky. And that triggered mudslides and numerous uh, water rescues. And then after that, the same article goes on to mention the deadliest tornado outbreak. Remember that key word, friends, outbreak. The deadliest tornado outbreak in Kentucky's history, 80 lives were taken. And it looks to me as though the prince of the power of the air is very busy and we need to be loving and supporting these precious folks in Kentucky and the other places around the USA. 
And it's crucial right now, more than ever, to be listening for the Holy Spirit's guidance. All right, we need to wake up in the middle of the night if he's wanting, if he's stirring us up to get up out of bed and pray, no matter what the hour is. And we need to share our resources with others. Now, I'm very thankful that there are others who are fasting and praying right now over Nancy Pelosi's airplane trip to Taiwan. Thank you to all of you who are doing that. They're fasting and praying that God would step in and not allow an all-out war. So, well, she's there, and apparently she's staying the night. So whether we agree with the foolish antics and back and forth of these political pundits, we need to look once again at the bigger picture. All right, friends, there are almost 24 million people on the island nation of Taiwan. And how many of them know Jesus Christ? How many of them are heaven bound? So pray for the Lord to pour out his spirit on this nation of Taiwan. Love them with your prayers. The Lord is always partnering with our prayers and he can send missionaries there and he can use the internet to reach them. He can send them dreams and visions of himself the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, he's doing it for many Muslims, isn't he? And God has no limits. The devil does not uh, want people to know about Christ and, and the hope that we have in heaven. So why do you think that Jesus is sending so many end time dreams and visions about heaven? Because he wants us to be excited about it, to have a hope and a bright future with him. But we have to put our full trust in him though. And the devil, he doesn't want people to believe in hell. So make sure you realize that we need to tell people hell is real. And the devil also created this false doctrine called cessationism. Friends, there are so many pastors who speak against what Jesus Christ is doing in the earth right now. It's sad. And Jesus is taking so many, praise the Lord, so many of his sons and daughters in dreams and visions to heaven in order to let them know that this place is not our home and only by him can we be saved. So this generation, friends, it's so blessed. God is surely pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Well, I'm going to read a prophetic word that the Lord had given me around two o'clock this morning. It's very serious of the times that we're living in. The Lord got me out of bed. He filled me with his spirit as he had me to write down these words to share with you. Okay. When there is no one left to lead the USA, there will be one who will come up out of the ashes and take the helm. He will be the one who will open the pits of hell, and assign assassins to each part of the land. He will systematically decimate all that has not been destroyed. He is the destroyer. He is the son of Abaddon. His name is worse than the worst virus ever developed, for his name has been foretold before the foundations of the earth. If you live in the USA and you have not surrendered yourself to the one true king of Israel, it's time to focus on surrendering your all to him. Take the time to read the Bible while you can from cover to cover. Take the time to develop the discipline to be considered a true son or daughter of God. The time that the USA has left, the Lord continues to say, is very short. Love one another intently. Do not call others' names and backbite during the upcoming elections. Take the time that you have, USA, to draw close to your creator. The enemy is sitting outside the door and is coming to take the nation to a war that it will not recover from. Come humbly to the one true king of the universe, while you still have time. Lord Yeshua, the mighty King of Israel. Amen. So we need to heed people like myself, friends, and others who the Lord has called to stand up for the spiritual heart of this nation. Ask God for mercy and grace 
when you hear prophetic messages like this one and pray for divine opportunities to share the gospel with the lost. I do it all the time. Lord, give me a divine encounter today of someone who needs to know about your grace. All right, well, friends, I'll be back tomorrow to share more, and I pray for each of you to have a day filled with the perfect peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good night.